Hey everyone, if you want to know how to save data so that when a player leaves and rejoins that the data can load again, then watch this video. Okay, so to do this, we need to make a script under server script service, and I'm going to call it data store. Now, to make this, we need to say local ds equals game colon get service. This will be the data store service colon get data store, and then this will be uh, save name. I'm just going to call it save name. Now, this ds here stands for data store. And just to let you know, I've got leader stats here, script here with some coins and gold. And this is what I'm going to be saving. It's drop down a couple of lines and we need to call a function when the player joins the game. So added colon connect function player. Now, what this means is when a player joins the game, they're going to be passed into here and we're going to run some code that is within this block here. So the code we want to run is wait. This will wait about 0 0.03 seconds just to give us some time for the player to load in. And now we need to create a key. So local key equals user underscore. Now this is going to be a special key, which will be special to each player. Dot dot player dot user ID like that. Now we're going to create a save value. So local save value one. This is a value we want to save equals player dot leader stats dot um dot coins because of course we, i want to save my coins and I, so i'm going to make a save value two as well so local save value two equals player dot leader stats dot gold and that is the second thing i want to save now we're going to say local get saved equals data store colon or ds get async now this is going to get the data store and we want to put the key in here now we need to check that if there actually is data, so if get saved, then we need to set save value one dot value, so the coins value, to get saved one, as that will be the first item we've saved, and save value two dot value, so the gold value, will be equal to get saved two, because that's the second value we've saved. Now, if we don't have any saved data, we're basically going to have to force ourselves to get, have some data, because otherwise we're not going to have anything. So let's create local numbers or or values, I think's a better word. Local values for saving equals and in here we need our save value. So save value one dot value and save value two dot value. You can have as many save values as you like, by the way. Now I'm gonna say ds colon get a sync key again, like up here with the get saved. But this time we're gonna add in something else, which is our numbers or values as we call it values for saving and this will basically force us to have some data because we need some data and that's all we need up here this is this will retrieve any data when the player joins the game now we also need game.players.player removing colon connect function and then player for when a player leaves so exact same business so this is the same as player added up here but when a player leaves we need to get the local save value one. So let's copy what's up here. This these two local save values and put them down here. As this just allows us to have more another reference to them. And now we need to um, save it. So ds, so data store, colon set async. So notice how up here we're using get. Down here we're using set. This, this is what sets the data. Now user underscore. Now that is incredibly crucial. It's the exact same as up here dot dot player dot user id now in fact we use plr didn't we not player and comma and now our values that we're saving so save value one dot value save value two dot value there are our values we're saving so we want to put those in a table here which is means you need to put them within these curly brackets Okay, now we also need to do this one more time, but if we uh, if the if the server is forcefully shut down, so game colon bind to close, and now in this uh, brackets here we just put in a function like so. So when the game is closed, and first of all we need to get the players. So for i v, so for i comma v in pairs, game dot players colon get children. So this will go through each player that is in the game. Okay, I'm gonna rename this v to player here just because it's, it's a player isn't it it's not an object and now we need to say player colon kick and that will kick the player out of the game 
And when they get kicked, it's going to cool this up here and everything will be good. Now, before we can test this, we need to go up to game settings, security, and enable studio access to API services. This is very, very important. Otherwise, it will not work in studio. Now, I think the best way to do this is if we go to file and publish to Roblox, we can then load up this Roblox game and hit play. And as you can see, we load in here, we've got our coins and our gold. Now, if I hit F9, we can open up the developer console. I'm going to hit server, and I'm going to give myself some coins. So game.players.ecircuit, or basically your player name, dot .leaderstats.coins.value plus equals 134. So we've now got 368 coins. If we now go over to our YouTube tutorial, and we shut down all servers and hit yes Roblox has shut down the server for maintenance if we now reconnect because what you'll see is it didn't make us leave the game but it should still save our value we should still have over 300 coins and as you can see we do so it works and that is all there is to it that's all you need to have to make this work this is our data store script and it works brilliantly so i hope you found this video helpful and if you did please be sure to leave a like and subscribe join our discord server please just why not uh, you'll actually be able to find this script inside our discord server some of our scripts we post in there so i'll see you in the next video everyone and goodbye